On the Harbor One Hotline, he sees us on Zoom. We see him on Zoom as well. Uh, by the way, I just want to alert the youngs, right? Oh. Because we've all got youngs in our lives. Apparently, U.S. lawmakers say TikTok won't be banned if it finds a new owner. Could you imagine what our country would do? My kid would be pissed. If the 14 to 24 year olds had TikTok taken away, heart your thoughts. Uh, maybe kids of that age would actually, I don't know, get their ass up and do something instead of just staring at their stupid phone and then making me do stupid TikToks when I've had a few beers on a Friday night when we get back from dinner. Well, listen, you know what? You get you get wrangled in and your drinking problem gets exposed, you yep, know? Yep, and I was shaking my ass on some Chinese website. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's clean, thank Nick, God. thank you. That was clean. We'll take Perfect. that. We'll save that because Hart's with us on uh, Thursday and Friday. Uh, so why are the Patriots allowing themselves to get used by Calvin Ridley? Uh, what other option do they have? I mean, you're, you're too, you, you have a simple, um, sort of need for a wide receiver. He's the best wide receiver on the open market. You have a lot of money. He knows that they know that everybody knows that you don't want to overpay for him because that's the part of this. I agree with. He's not a number one wide receiver. He'd be your number one wide receiver. That is a difference. Mm -hmm. Number one wide receivers do not hit free agency. I would just ask anyone, go find the guy that hits free agency that changes your offense for the next five years. They all get traded or drafted. So Calvin Ridley is what he is. He's the best available. And that's created this situation where, you know, you or I, well, not you, Gresh, you wouldn't, but maybe Lou, you and I might like break and say, ah, oh, F it, take another $20 million. I don't care, I need a receiver. Doesn't seem like the Patriots and Elliot Wolf are going to do that because, what did he say? He, it, It's spend money, it's save money, it's TBD. Well, he's tbd Inc. Yeah, and, and, and that kind of goes against the uh, Patriot version of full throttle. I know Mayo <laughs> took that back, but um, and I think that's the right move. I, I'm over with you. I don't, I don't pay... Or we'll trade for a guy like T. Higgins either, right? First, he's not a number one wide receiver in my opinion. Oh, we're sure about that? We're sure about that? What? You think they should? T. Higgins, I'm more intrigued by. Why? Because, as I said, that's how you get number one receivers. You, you think he's number one wide receiver? Uh, I think you can make a strong argument. Jonathan Jones does. Go back to Christmas Eve two years ago and ask Jonathan Jones if he thinks that uh, T. Higgins is the number one receiver. Well, he treated you get... him like a child. Yeah, and when you get treated like a child and have a bad game, you come out and overhype the guy. But without Jamar Chase, is he a number one wide receiver? Is he uh, Juju? Who is he? Is he it's, Ridley? It's... Without Julio Jones, who is he? I would, I would guess he's a number one wide receiver. My question is... Is he the twenty third best wide receiver in the number one slot, or is he the you know twelfth best, or where does he go uh, on that ladder? And and that's the question teams ask when they're paired up. You know, you break up Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen. They so, were rolling in Minnesota, so, right? And Stephon Diggs goes to Buffalo, and he proves, yeah, I'm the man. So is this the wide receiver room going into the draft? Uh, no, I, I got to think they do something, whether you settle for a Hollywood Brown. I mean, the most intriguing guy on the market, I think we could all agree is probably Brandon Ayuk, right? In San Francisco. If he's legitimately a trade option, if there is any fire with that late smoke there, you got a guy coming off. I think he averaged 18 yards a catch last year. I'll do, a, a, I'll do a quick back to back Google. thousand yard seasons. I know he gets a little bit lost in the McCaffrey Debo hype. Yep. I'll take Brandon Ayuk, and I think we're all a little bit trigger shy because coming into the league from Arizona State, I think people thought he was Nikhil Harry, and he's become what I guess Nikhil Harry was supposed to become. But, um, you know, there's not a lot of options. I'm not going to pretend there are a lot of real palatable, awesome options out there. And the thing that concerns me is if you don't sign a tackle like Tyron Smith and you don't sign a receiver like Calvin Ridley, whatever the cost, you're saying I absolutely have to nail the hell out of the draft. I have to get a starting quarterback at three, a starting tackle at 34, and a starting receiver at 68. And that just feels feels a little bit unlikely to me. Well, Hart, let, let's, let's circle back on Calvin Ridley. Is it better to overpay uh calvin ridley to get him in here or is it better to just keep signing guys that are at maybe the level that you have like for example do you entertain an older keenan allen if he hits the market do you think of hunter renfro where they aren't a real quote-unquote say number one but they provide you depth that well if you had a guy like a tom brady you'd be able to spread the ball around a little bit so 
my question would be, and I don't know the answer to this, what they're thinking, but the I'm going to use a term from Bill Belichick. I know he's frowned upon in these parts uh, now, although it's getting harder and harder to blame him on all the uh, frugality over the years because he's not here and they're doing the same damn thing. Um, You're wrong, Hod. He was a bastard. He was old. He was a troglodyte. He needed to go. <laughs> well, all those things can be true, and, and you can still not have a great uh, new era here to start off with. But Hot what ass. is... What is the timeline of the mosaic? Bill always liked to say that putting your roster together is a mosaic, right? Like it's got all these little pieces and you fit them together artfully. What's the timeline? 2026. Okay. Then <laughs> then I'm not Yeah, yeah, no, and, yeah. and that's a that's a good answer because then I'm doing everything with that timeline in mind. And that may be you know, in the last week we've had this Drake May hate that he needs to sit for two years. He can't play for two years. Wow. And if you're drafting Drake May and you believe in that, Gresh, I don't believe in that. But if you believe in that, I think that affects some of your other decisions. Why would I sign Keenan Allen to play one year, the last year of his career here, and get a thousand? Like, to what end? I'd right. rather have young receivers go the Packers route, where you have a young quarterback with young receivers. You know, the Packer way is taking over in Foxborough. So, I think the timeline does matter in terms – also with Ridley, though, if you are drafting a receiver that you really believe in, if you really think you're going to get a receiver at 34, let's say, or trade up, A.D. Mitchell's the guy I've fallen in love with, the kid out of Texas. I think he's an absolute stud. If you can get him trade up late in the first round, you trade up from 34 to 26, you get A.D. Mitchell, you got your number one receiver. Then I don't really hate overpaying Ridley to be my two because – I'm not paying A.D. Mitchell a ton, yeah. and by the time I have to pay A.D. Mitchell, I'm taking Ridley off the books. So I can average out those two wide receiver costs and just say, well, my wide receiver one and two cost me $22 million, $2 million for Mitchell and twenty for Ridley. And by the time Rid uh, Mitchell's ready to be the expensive one, Ridley's gone. So, Andy, I want to ask you, because I think most people agree that at three, if there's a quarterback that they love, they just take him, and it's yeah. over with. What if it's a guy they don't believe in, and we don't know what's going on in that room? What if you'd mentioned Drake May? Let's just, for example, let's just say they don't really think he's a great quarterback, and if they don't get Daniels, they don't want May. What's your plan after if that happens? Uh, I think you trade down, because I think there's enough teams that are in need of quarterbacks that would be lusting after Drake May, can be talked into Drake May. Then how do you get the quarterback? Or what do you do? Uh, that's that's the problem. Do you trade Whether back that's... in the first round, looking at Penix, looking at Knicks, or do you just say Brissett and Zappy? Uh, well, you can't do that. No. To me, that's irresponsible, as Bill Belichick once said about a quarterback depth chart in Indy. That would be irresponsible if you put Bailey Zappi and Jacoby Brissett out there with no hope for the future because there's also no carrots on the horizon at the quarterback position in college football. No obvious, no Caleb Williams, no Trevor Lawrence's like you're lusting after a year or two from now. Next year's draft class at the quarterback position is very dubious. But I do think if you don't, if you don't think there's a realistic chance that the guy that's available at three is a franchise quarterback... I think you have to trade out. I think you trade down. Maybe that allows you to uh, recoup another extra one for next year. Maybe you don't think there's that much difference between Drake May and J.J. McCarthy, and you throw a J.J. McCarthy, Bailey Zappi, um, Jacoby Brissett depth chart out there, and you've added another one and some other picks to your assets to mm -hmm. steal Danny Ainge's term. Uh, Hart, should we believe that just because Bill Belichick is out of the building that the group that's there can – evaluate wide receivers which has been a draft problem for many years here yeah no i i think everything is questionable right now everything is dubious um matt grow was there elliot wolf was there matt grow seemingly took credit for tyquan thornton when they took him talking about you want fast players you're going to draft fast players that whole line of thinking and tyquan thornton stinks and now he's bulking up which i've never understood i am i supposed to be feel great that they're speed burning wide receiver is bulking up why is he bulking up because he realized he can't get by on speed in the nfl did randy moss have to bulk up like i don't think you do if you're really a fast well, long receiver that is quite an example okay give me an example of a skinny speed burner cat okay um what's his name in uh in, Devontae uh, smith yeah i was just yeah, gonna say smith. smith yeah is he bulking up is he bulking up at all? Uh, no, but he's also you had... You know why? Because he's good. Well, he's also had success his first two years. Because yeah, he's good. Tyquan Thornton's It's not to... about the weight. It's about the talent, well, Thornton. Tyquan, Tyquan's trying to... You can put on to... as much weight as you he's want. He's trying to do something different. Maybe they told him he's going to be a tight end. <laughs> yeah, Maybe okay, they want let's him move to him be... inside. Maybe yeah, they block. want him to be Mike Williams 2.0, a big, Ooh. oversized wide receiver. 
A skinny jag and a fat jag, they're still jags. It doesn't matter. You haven't changed anything. So what was the question? How can we fairly evaluate Tyquan Thornton given what's gone on here in the last two years? Like, I, I, I think we do need to remind ourselves his de facto offensive coordinator in year one was an overweight guy who's lucky to have a job in Philly. Yep. Who's on but the also, other side of the ball. Have you ever seen Tyquan Thornton just, like, run by people and look special? He no. He have special speed. He no, doesn't. There's been none of the, oh, you got him on a matchup in the slot, not and he ran a fast. go route, and he's, you just throw, yeah. Not football fast. Thank you, fast. Lou. He's not football fast. No. And fair or not, I always compare him to Bethel Johnson, who was another kind of bust second-round receiver, but he was football fast. There were times Brady threw it up, and you saw Bethel Johnson put it in gear six and go get the football and make a play for Brady, or on kickoff returns, put it in sixth gear right, and run away go. from people. I was going to say, because so, Bethel Johnson would yeah. drop anything thrown so, to him. No, Patriots, no, no. Go back yeah. to that playoff game over the middle in the cold. He won the game for him. They've, they've, Tyquan, yeah, they've so the, the Pats have made some moves here, but you know, obviously no big splashes. No um, I want to ask you about the O-line. Because I wouldn't mind if that splash came at tackle and allowed them to kind of approach it a little bit differently in the draft and just create some depth. If you're going to make one splash, to me, it's like the offensive line. If nothing else is out there in free agency, that's worth it. Yeah, I, I think somehow you need to find either a receiver that you think is a starter or a left tackle that you think is a starter yeah. in the next couple of days. You know, as I said earlier, I don't think you can go into the draft thinking you're going to nail the hell out of it to the point where you get a starting receiver and a starting tackle on day two, especially a starting left tackle. Right. I'd feel a little bit better, but you have right tackles. You have Mike Onwenu and you have Okorafor, who are both right tackles. I have no reason to believe you have anybody right now that can start at left tackle. Calvin and Anderson? Come on now. Excuse me? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. No, we're not doing that again. We're not doing any of those names. Andrew Stuba or any of these other guys we try to talk ourselves Riley into. Riley Reef. No, I want an actual tackle. Right. And you might be able to get one at 34, but I don't think you can also get a receiver. So if you're going to get the receiver, if you somehow sneak in and get Ridley or Hollywood or make a trade, okay, I feel better about now I can target tackle late in the first round if I trade up or at 34. That's why Tyron Smith is so intriguing, and I know they have some like for him in the building, but he's a scary proposition because he's played like less than half the games over the last four years. Yeah. He's old and he doesn't play. When he's, when he's out there, I still think he can be good, and he might be a good mentor to some of your young tackles that you're trying to draft and develop. But as much as I wanted on Wenu back because I thought you needed some stability somewhere on that line, you still have a gaping hole. I, I just wish Okorafor were a left tackle. Like, if you had told me he started 59 games for the Steelers at left tackle, even if he's middling, but he's got NFL starting experience over multiple seasons at left tackle, I'd feel better about this whole operation. But I don't, because you got two right tackles and no left tackle. It kind of feels like uh, well, Jonah Williams from Cincinnati. Sure. He was the left tackle who went to the other side when they got Orlando yep. Brown. You can sell me on him. That feels, but mm -hmm. that also feels like, a, and again, I know it was a Bill Belichick dirty word, but they still use it down there. That's kind of the value add, let's say, because it's a guy who's played the right side. Market's probably a little suppressed on him. Hey, we know we can put him on the left side and at least survive if something else doesn't work out. Because, Hart, you're a million percent right. If the number three pick is automatically going to go to a quarterback, uh, and it's pretty much they've said that down there, then you got the high second rounder. Is it going to a wide receiver or is it going to a tackle? And a lot of people talk about trading back. I wonder if the real trade back is in the second round to get you an extra third round asset because the crop of wide receivers outside of the top two, it's really 20 to like 90 is where the crop of wide receivers are. So everybody's focusing on trading down from three. I'm wondering if the trade down is really in the second round. You can still get a tackle and add a wide receiver in that round for people who might be able to come in and play. Sure. It's a dangerous game to play. Yep. I mean, you're getting further away from the elite talent. Um, and I think there's going to be some teams that do the opposite. You know, there's a certain tackle or receiver they like, and when those runs start in the teens and the 20s, they're going to they blink go, and they're going to yep, jump. I'm going back up. I'm getting him at 25. I'm not waiting to see if he makes it to the second night of the draft. So there's going to be a lot of evaluations there. And the, both of those positions, we've already done the podcast, quick uh, pimping of the podcast here, Six Rings and Football Things Prospect Podcast, available now on the Odyssey app mm -hmm. and everywhere you I get your prospect podcasts. Podcast. Um, <laughs> but we broke down wide receivers. We broke down tackles. Nice. We've already broken down quarterbacks. And both of those positions are indeed deep. 
But there's guys in there that I think some will love, like the worthy kid out of Texas. Oh, you're at a 4-2-1. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Is he a good receiver? I don't think so. My kid loves him, him, thinks he's the best wide receiver in college football because of that 40. Yeah, I, I know. disagree with your child. <laughs> but hey, well, he Al Davis him. made a career out of basically thinking yeah. the same thing. Take yeah. the biggest, fastest guy and see if he can play football later. Um, but there's just this variance of guys that Lad McConkey. people can love him, people can not love him. People are going to fall in love with certain guys, but not everybody. So yeah, there's going to be 20 receivers drafted, but if you only like six of them and four or five of them start to go early, are you going to jump up to get that last receiver that's actually on your board that mm-hmm. you think can actually come in and have an impact? So I, this is fun season. This is, you know, when you have high picks and high needs and all of this, it's fun. But I, I do believe Elliot Wolf has been really uh, Belichickian in sticking to his value. And he's, if we're going to be honest, he's won the contracts, he's won the game. You know, I think with um, Duggar and the transition tag, the market's flooded with safeties. I don't think Duggar's going to see what he thought he was going to see out there. Mike Onwenu, I think he thought he was going to get north of $20 million like Robert Hunt in Carolina. He did not. He came back sub $20 million. Hunter Henry, I thought he'd get a little bump on $12 million a year. He's playing for less than ten. Million a year. You got freaking guys turning down supposedly eleven million dollars guaranteed elsewhere for three million dollars here. Not buying in, that. I'm not buying it one bit. No, oh yeah, you're not. You're you're right. You were you're just talking about heart, Uche. Right? Yeah. I don't. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but he is a dumb person if he left eleven. No way. Million you turned down eleven guaranteed. guarantee over two years for three. Correct. To come back you, to this, like, you know, no your, disrespect, but no. And, what is and this? Everybody's like, well, what if he has a big year? Well, he had a big half a year once. The rest of his career is trending toward out of the league, not getting a massive new contract. Right. Like. You know who should, he should apologize to? Like kids, grandkids, grandkids, kids, anyone that's like, hey, that's our inheritance that yeah. you just left on the table elsewhere. That's generational money for $11 million. And, and, and let me just add this quickly because I, I know we got to run. But okay. um, I heard so much about connectivity to players. Yeah. When does that start to, uh, when does that start to show itself in free agency? Well, Josh because, Uche just turned down eleven million dollars on the table. <laughs> sure, to come back sure. here. Could you yes. get more connectivity? But, he but, loves him some mayo, but, baby. But how about being able to like oh, recruit shit. players? Because again, one of the narratives that that started up at the end of the Belichick run, which was kind of poppycock, quite honestly, was the doesn't connect the people, doesn't connect the players. Okay, well, if you're telling me the new guy does, then when does that connectivity come into play? So Calvin Ridley doesn't ping dingling around and use you for two days. When is that? If this is the great connector of people, for God's sakes, when is he going to connect with an outside free agent to be able to get somebody worth a damn in here? I'm waiting for the Messiah to connect. My God, it's like the Internet AOL dial-up. You are an angry large man, but I don't think you're wrong. I think they're learning in the building that a 36-year-old Gerard Mayo isn't really a draw. Like, no one is excited. And I think that happens in all Oh, we're going to get a young head coach with this and that ex-player. No, give me money more and more. It's money. Yeah. It's money. It's, now, hell, now it's basically money in high school, money in college, and money in the pros. It you can bring in an alumni, great head coach, blah blah blah. How much is my NIL? How much is my signing bonus? How much is guaranteed? The rest of it, okay. Do I want to play for a nice guy once I get here and I'm earning my? Sure, that's great, but that's gravy. The Sunday is actually the money. There you mm-hmm. go, uh, Andy Hart of weei.com. Hart will be in this chair that Lou is in on Thursday and Friday because Foyer's got to son his fanny in Florida. Hart, thank you. Hardest man, hardest working man in the business, I guess, huh? I don't think That's so. two. He might be the hardest man in the business. Thanks, too, Andy. Good talking to you. <laughs> See you guys. That's right. two. We got two great drops today from uh, Andy Hart. We will take it.